Guys, I have a very exciting announcement to make. I finally, after all these years, have merch on sale made together with my frequent thumbnail artist Spencer Kane. Check it out in the description below. Stay tuned for the end of this video for more info in case you're interested. I'm really excited to talk about it. With that said, let's start the video. Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and anyone in between. Welcome back to the Creepypasta Vault. Today we have five stories prepared for you all on this exciting expedition, so if you may, let's enter. In today's episode, we will be joining a few of our penguin friends over on the prestigious club simply titled... Well, Club Penguin. This massively multiplayer online game was and still is greatly popular with kids and adults alike. Well, adults mostly play it for the nostalgia factor and to find out how fast they can get banned, I guess, but it's still an interesting little game for all ages, filled with many fun activities and things to do. Obviously, some of the players of this game decided that, hey, this innocent and completely harmless game would be the perfect subject to base a scary internet horror story on, right? That's how we've ended up with these next five stories. And things are about to get rough. Is everyone ready? I don't know if you are, but we can't go back now. This is where it begins. Sit back, enjoy, and let's go through five awful Club Penguin creepypastas. Number 5. Club Penguin The Lost Server It was December and a very snowy evening. I eventually got bored, so I wanted to play some Club Penguin. Yeah, that's my first resort in the blizzard too, it really adds to the immersion. I looked at the blog first, because why not? That's a good question. I saw that they were testing a new server, and they picked five penguins to test it. Gymnast516, Chubrox, Alapal12, Creamy Chill, and Gretchen7972. Who were these five kids the ones who found the golden tickets? One of them was me. Gretchen7972 to be exact. I was so excited! More excited than when I was picked to test the CPIP servers. I grabbed my laptop and flung onto my bunk bed. <laughs> oh, you're being very aggressive about this, buddy. I logged in and scanned the screen to see the new server. I then saw a button with Aunt Arctic on it saying, To test the new servers, click this button. I clicked and saw the new servers. Chilly Willy, <laughs> oh dear. Hot Cocoa, Chocolate, Igloo, Doom. One of them caught my eye. The Doom one. Oh, what a surprise. Being the curious kid I was, I clicked on it. Boy, what a mistake that was. I ended up in the dock and it was a very scary sight. There were dead bodies everywhere of penguins and their puffles. Oh, we're heading right for the dead bodies up front, aren't we? With no build up at all. How shocking. I already wanted to log off, but an orange pop-up came up and said, You haven't learned your lesson yet, Gretchen. I was so surprised they knew my real name. I mean, they could have probably gathered that from your username, but okay. I clicked the OK button at the top. Then it automatically took me somewhere. Loading server. Loading video. Loading no escape. Then it actually was a video. You don't say. I clicked on it. It started off with Rookie on a sunny day with all the other CP mascots in the grass. Rookie then sported a crooked smile and took out a pocket knife. He slowly walked to the others. Rookie slashed his pocket knife and slashed Agent G in half. Blood oozed everywhere. I covered my mouth to keep me from vomiting. Yes, uh, excuse me. I'd like a bit of an explanation for why all of this is happening. Why is this rookie guy doing this all of a sudden? Rookie put his pocket knife aside and got a rifle. Oh, <laughs> I guess we're not getting any of that. And shot all the others. Blood splattered on the camera lens. Rookie then stomped on Cadence's head just in case she was dead. <laughs> Yeah, I think you got her, buddy. I, I think she's pretty dead. Rookie stared at the camera and said in a grim voice, 
You'll never get rid of me, Gretchen, no matter how hard you try. Never. Then it went to static, and it started showing gruesome images, like Cadence ripping her own eyes out, Agent G's head strung on a dirty ceiling, and many others. <laughs> and why is this happening? This all just sounds like something you'd find on YouTube made by some edgy animator. And are they all like drawn in a cartoon style? Because that sounds hilarious. I then got on my spare computer and called my friend Jessica on Skype. It turns out she was playing CP2. She said, Gretchen it's nothing like that on CP. Go get some fresh air. <laughs> she then giggled and I hung up and got some fresh air. Big mistake. Very big bad mistake. <laughs> I walked back in to see my family dead <laughs> and blood writing on the ceiling. You're next, Gretchen. What? I guess the moral of this story is that going outside is bad and you should never do it. Was nature a mistake? Never go on this supposed server if you see it on your server list. Quit CP forever, or else some bad things will happen. Yeah, I can get behind that. So, I guess this entire story was a ploy for people to stop playing the game. Or am I reading too much into it? Anyways, wasn't that... something? Everything just fell into place and made total sense by the end, didn't it? No, nothing in the story flowed well together and there was no reason for any of it to exist. A horror story shouldn't just be a collection of random spooky occurrences. We need a narrative thread for it all to come together and it needs to have a point. This story had none of that and it suffered as a result of it. Number 4. Club Penguin, Penguin Triple Six. This title is not receiving points for originality. Most of us know and play the MMO Club Penguin. Know of the rumor of tipping the iceberg. Ah yes, that is a rumor as old as time itself. Well, I read a forum and one post of a moderator said that on a completely empty server, one can go on and tip the iceberg by themselves on a certain spot. Me, being a self-proclaimed mythbuster, decided to try it out. I went on a server named Iceberg, no pun intended, and headed to, well, the Iceberg. As I joined the Iceberg, I saw that there was a player there. I thought this was an empty server, so I was perplexed by this. When I clicked on the player card, it showed the penguin's name was Triple Six. I dare not say the numbers, in fear he might come back with an odd background. <laughs> That's just slightly dramatic. The background was a view of hell, showing flames and molten lava. His attire was a devil costume, complete with a trident. Well, that's very fitting, isn't it? How quaint. I checked the numerous of players on the server, and the list only had me on it, even after refreshing the list numerous times. I thought this was a sort of bug, as in a player model data from hours or days before being submitted to the screen. Translation from Hebrew Ye hath crossed a dangerous path, puny mortal, the player said. Ah, it's a good thing the author knows Hebrew then. After the text disappeared, he said something else. Translation You do not know the ancient tongue, you jester. Knowing some Hebrew, I saw this as an insult. Damn, son, this drama is juicy. Spell the T, sister! As my penguin wa- <laughs> As my penguin waddled over to the Aqua Grabber game, a text popped up saying, You shouldn't have done that. Ben, is, is that you? All of the icebergs started rumbling and quaking breaking the iceberg in half, leaving me with triple six. I waddled over to the edge of the cracked iceberg, and triple six followed me. He said in English for the first time, saying, Why are you running away from me? You shouldn't have done that. Triple six pulled out a knife and stabbed my penguin in its chest. Blood poured out, and I'm not talking about CGI. I'm talking it looked like real human blood. Don't say it. Don't you dare say it! My penguin fell and Triple Six kicked him into the cold water, leaving part of the water red with blood. Ooh, that's an epic fight scene. 
My screen went haywire, but when it reset, it showed my penguin alive, but had stitches in its chest where the knife struck. Its he setting was in the town. <laughs> I was thirsty and creeped out, watching my back as I went to my refrigerator to get some water. I went back to the computer and saw that Triple X was in the town square with me. I typed in, Why are you doing this to me? And immediately, he replied with, because I like watching people suffer. Yeah, that's a justifiable motivation. Trying to run away, I went to the gift shop. I saw blood and intestines spewed everywhere, with a severed penguin's head attached to the blow dryer. In the changing room, it showed the curtain opened and showed numerous bodies strewn and severed all over. Oh, there's the gross out gore. The screen went red and showed horrifying images of real mangled human body parts. And the computer caught fire and as I ran to get the fire extinguisher, I heard a faint laughing noise coming from the computer. A few days later, I went back onto my account. It said I was banned for all eternity showing Triple Six's model replacing the moderator badge. Oh no, what a devious little rascal that Triple Six guy was. Our precious narrator will never be able to touch Club Penguin again. Unless, well, they make another account. Bet they didn't think of that. So, why was Triple Six speaking Hebrew specifically? What an intriguing question. Will we ever get the answer? That's also an intriguing question. Number three, Club Penguin, Rookie.avi. There are so many AVI stories out there, I swear. Ever since I was little, I freaking loved the game Club Penguin. I had almost every collectible toy video game. Then when I turned 19, I moved to Kelowna, BC and got a job as a moderator and co-artist at the CPHQ. <laughs> oh yeah, of course you did at age 19. Two months have passed and I was deciding for the new party, sipping my tea when my friend Chris, aka Spike Hike, said that I need to come down to the auditorium for a short for the Club Penguin YouTube channel. I put down my tea and followed him. <laughs> I love how much emphasis the author places on this cup of tea. They must really love that beverage. I then sat down and Chris eventually had to turn the screen and other things on and it then started. The screen went in static and it showed the screen revealing the title. It was just a black screen with a white text saying rookie.avi. I was confused but kept watching. Why were you confused though? It went to Rookie in a basement, crying uncontrollably. Cadence came in and asked him what is wrong. Rookie became sobbing. Oh, perfect English right there. J j j just kill me. I can't live anymore. Rookie cried. And why would I do that? Cadence asks, confused. Because I'm... Rookie began. Death. Cadence gasps. Rookie grabs a pocket knife. D -d -d Wait, this story deals with Rookie going nuts too and using a pocket knife too. Is this just a popular subject to write about or are we dealing with two stories being written by the same author here? Maybe this is a remake. He runs after Cadence. Cadence then trips and Rookie comes on top of her. Oh, <laughs> that is a poor choice of words. And cut out her throat and wounded her brutally. <laughs> Wounded? I'm pretty sure you die if your throat is cut out, just saying. It then cuts to Rookie with a half-torn face, smiling creepily. Blood oozes out of his mouth and down on his flippers. <laughs> you can't take that seriously. He walks with a hunched back and spots Gary. He then slashes Gary with the knife. Yeah, poor Gary. Blood oozing rapidly. PH comes in and says, Rookie, you despicable little shit. You've been killing people for too goddamn long. It ends now. She yells and gets a gun and shoots Rookie. <laughs> Wait, so him going around killing people has gone on for a while and this PH character decided to act now instead of earlier because... <laughs> oh, my brain. It the cuts to white text saying... And that's how Rookie's killing spree came to an end. 
It ends with a loud flesh smacking noise and it ends. <laughs> flesh smacking noise? I, uh, I will leave it up to your imagination to come up with what that could mean. Everyone in the room started screaming, sobbing and wailing uncontrollably. Everyone left the auditorium when I secretly took the DVD, which just had black sharpie writing saying rookie.avi, oh, you sneaky bastard. A few weeks passed and I heard on the news millions of parents across the globe suing Club Penguin for inappropriate content. Some didn't even let their kids even play the damn game again. Oh wow, that sounds like it was a global event. How come I didn't hear about it? Because it obviously happened, right? Also, if you were already working for Club Penguin, wouldn't you have heard about this already? Why I took the DVD is because I hope to understand it one day. The end? There's nothing to understand here, mate. It was nothing but a crude animated video of some penguin douche going around killing his penguin friends. It doesn't go any deeper than that, so there, I solved your life's mystery in five seconds. Hopefully now, you can move on with your life. Number 2. P666. Another 666 story? Are all of these stories conjured up by a hive mind or something? Is there like a list of things that has to be in a Club Penguin creepypasta that needs to be checked off? I was a regular 12 year old boy that loved to play Club Penguin. I had Club Penguin plushies, cards, toys, etc. Ah, we've got another fanatic on our hands, eh? So as every morning, I got online and went to clubpenguin.com. The site was loading slower than usual. When it finally loaded, the screen was all black and it's big red letters, it said play now. I thought, why not? Bad choice. Creepypasta protagonists never seem to make good choices, do they? They all seem to just be naturally unlucky. I clicked the play now button and logged in as usual. When the server screen came up, there were only three servers. Hell, Fire, Abyss. I got a little frightened, but I decided to click fire. It loaded and the loading screen took me to the town. I was alone. Then, a penguin appeared. The penguin's name was P666. Whoa. I just waddled away to the snow forts. <laughs> waddled. He followed. You can't run, he said. You're now my puppet. You will see me wherever you go. I went to my igloo and there were red penguins in a huge circle, all scary as names like the Slasher, Bone Twister, Skullcracker. Tons of red penguins in a circle around my igloo saying, Time to die. Time to die. I was in the middle of the circle and that's when P666 appeared. Thought you could hide? I will destroy everything you stand for. Everything you live for. What exactly has our protagonist done to deserve this? Has he sinned? I went to the dock and there was another penguin named Ben. Ben? I thought. He said, they will kill you. They killed me. Run, run. This is just an online game. Someone probably wait, wait, what? <laughs> oh my god, I, I think the author forgot to end the quote, so I thought this was still the character speaking, but nope. This is just a online game. Someone probably hacked it. P666 appeared and said, Emit ot aid. And red penguins just kept filling the dock where all you would see was red. They all said, Emit ot aid. Emit ot aid. I logged off. I closed the browser. Finally, someone in all of these stories actually did it. Someone shut the program down after it started acting freaky. Thank you, my prayers have been answered. My desktop background said, Emit ot aid. With a picture of dead bodies everywhere. I started crying and ran outside. I decided to take a walk. When I got home, my house was on fire. Whoopsie. I ran so far and fell on the floor. <laughs> you failed at life. A man walked up to me all dressed in black. I am P666, he said. He pulled out a butcher knife and split my whole face in half. He dragged my body into a cellar not far from where I ran. 
There were tons of bodies in the cellar. They all looked about my age. P666 looked at his watch. Ah, oh, look at that. Time to play Club Penguin. So, did the author turn into a ghost? Is that how he's able to see all these things happening? Was that how he wrote this story? Epilogue. Three years later. Wow, time really flies, doesn't it? News reporter. More than 500 bodies have been found over the last weekend and we are still looking for the killer and our hearts go out to the families. 500 in a weekend? How was no one able to catch this guy? All the killings are estimated to have taken place three years ago. The bodies were in a cellar and all the bodies looked like the age range was 10 to 13 years old. Our hearts go out. Oh yeah, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now we can all feel better about ourselves. Look out for this P666 character, everyone. You never know where he might pop up. I guess, I, I, I don't even know. Number one, Club Penguin Lost World. Is this gonna be a Club Penguin and Sonic the Hedgehog crossover episode? Probably not, but I, I can hope. I'm a fan of Club Penguin, even though it's for little kids. <laughs> Are you sure you're not one of them? I used to communicate with my friends since I don't get a phone until I'm 13. I got on today because I got an email saying, Club Penguin is getting new items, starting today. I noticed that I never knew I had an email and Club Penguin never sent emails as far as I knew. Well, that's just terrifying. I can't wait to see what horror unfolds next. Anyways, I got on Club Penguin and almost jumped at the sight of the front page. 1. Everything was typed in Latin. Yeah, Latin is frightening. Number 2. Penguins were eating each other and their pets. Ooh, that's a little worse. Number 3. Dead penguins and pets were nailed up on boards, crosses, and the lighthouse that is out on the side of the screen. They all had one thing in common, too. They are eyes were gouged out and triangles were drawn on the top of their heads. I shiver ran down my spine at the sight. When I clicked on play now, it said... Good. I was confused, obviously. Yes, obviously. It went straight into my account that I was going to use. It said Sumting in Latin. Ipse sus expectantes. I looked up what it said and it translated to, he's waiting. Being a creepypasta, ugh, I know that he wasn't good. I was in a crimson colored version of the pizza place. Except instead of pepperoni on the pizza, it was penguin, question mark. Flesh. I went to the game where you make pizza for the customers and it said the butcher game instead of make pizza. My only choice was sick was yes in Latin. My first order was to butcher Aunt Arctic. It was gross. Hyper realistic blood flew everywhere and her eyes were gouged out and thrown on a pizza crust. Ooh, mamma mia! Then it showed a cut scion of my penguin eating the pizza happily. My penguin said with a smile, Populi amorem inferos. I didn't translate it, I was too afraid of the results. It means people love hell. There, solved it for ya. My computer went to a black screen and then five seconds later my face came up all decomposed and a triangle carved into my forehead and my eyes gouged out. Oh no. Then crimson words came up saying, Ne abscondas non concurrentibus vobis faciam. Wick said, don't run, don't hide, I will find you. I guess they did, because that's where the story ends. I guess whatever entity was possessing Club Penguin came and snatched up the author as soon as they finished translating the final message? Or the author just gave up and decided the story wasn't working, but decided to publish it anyways. I will let you decide, my dear viewer. Well, those were... Were they even stories? It's hard to say at this point. Anyways, at least they had something to do with Club Penguin, so at least there's that. I hope you enjoyed the journey, and I hope it was educational. 
or at the very least, entertaining. With that said, let's exit the vault. I'd like to thank you for sticking with me until the end. As promised at the beginning of this video, let's talk about the brand new merch I have for sale for a bit. I have partnered up with my friend and longtime collaborator Spencer Kane, who usually draws the thumbnails I use in a lot of my videos, to create some designs for my new storefront simply titled Hoodlum Hijinks. By clicking the link in the description, you will be taken to the page where you can find official Huda Hoodlum merchandise to suit your every need. Ever wanted to represent our badass clan? Now you can without much hassle. Do you want a t-shirt, a hoodie, or maybe even a coffee mug? Well, look no further. Hoodlum Hijinks has you covered. Check the link in the description and you will find what you're looking for. We hope you will find something you will enjoy. I will also leave a link down to Spencer's official website because that guy is one of the most talented and friendly artists I've ever come across. He is super easy to work with and all around, a pretty hip young dude. He deserves so much more attention for the amazing stuff he produces. Well, that's all I've got to say for this video. I hope you had a good time watching it. If you did, Wanna leave a like, comment which story was your personal favorite, and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, you can always give me a follow on Twitter, Instagram, or Snapchat in order to get updates on what's going on with the channel and such, or just random funny thoughts that I have once in a while. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay awesome. Good bye. Special thanks to my wonderful top tier patrons, including Lucien Mitchell, SB379, and Amanda. You guys make this channel what it is, so thank you, I really appreciate it.